All right, let's start with Josh. He says, I'm amazed these NFL.com analysts have four of five round one mock drafts taking Dexter Lawrence, a 350-pound nose guard, considering the scheme the Colts run. I see the Colts going against character and trading up if Brian Burns falls to the 15th pick or so. Do you think Ballard would do that to get his future pass rusher? Well, I guess first, yeah, I am a little surprised about the Dexter Lawrence hype. Um, You know, I I know that the Colts... And I think I've said this before in the podcast, I had some pretty serious interest in Vita Vea last year, the big man out of Washington. But to me, I, I, I don't know, Joey. I just think in today's NFL, you can live with a little bit smaller of a tackle. Nose tackle, that, that, that is. And I feel like if you still have a guy like Grover Stewart on your roster, um, you know, maybe that can help you out against Tennessee. But who knows? I mean, maybe Ballard lo- looks at this division and thinks Jacksonville's still going to pound it. Tennessee's still going to pound it. Mm-hmm. We need a bit of a bigger body in there, but I'd want more of a three-down guy, which I think you know Wilkins or Tyquan Lewis. You know those guys can be that. As far as straight up for Burns, fifteen I think is just a hair too early. Again, I I would be surprised if they traded up. And you know, look at the Saints last year; they moved from twenty-seven to fourteen. They give up a future first rounder. That scenario you're gonna you're going up from you know twenty six to fifteen, you're gonna give up something pretty darn similar, yeah. And I, I'm just not ready. I think someone would have to fall almost to twenty before you saw some serious scurrying in the Colts' war room. So your realistic expectations for Kamoko Terry and Taekwon Lewis in year two? Oh, certainly. I think a lot can change in the next three weeks, Joey. You know, how much attention do you give the defensive line? Right now, I would say this. Ture is your third defensive end. He's behind Sheard, behind Houston. Um, You have to love the work that he's put in this summer with Robert Mathis. His body, and again, Kamoko Ture, probably one of the more frequent social media presences on the Colts roster. And... um, Likes to let you know he's working out. Yes, and a lot of pictures with his shirt off. So he looks the part, and and that was part of it, was getting bigger. Um, 235-ish, 38-ish pounds he played at last year. That's not enough to survive in the NFL, certainly if you want to play three downs. So I think he's your third defensive end, and I think what he needs to do with that is just prove himself that he is deserving – of third down reps, you know, can you have some packages to where maybe you move Sheard inside and it's Houston and Torrey coming off the edge, or maybe Sheard goes off the field. Who knows? I mean, it's something where Chris Bauer wants to play seven to eight guys, 60, 65% of the snaps. Um, so I think that's where you are right now with Torrey. I would say right around five or six sacks should be very reasonable expectations for him. Lewis, this goes back to my thinking, Joey, of, I'd probably rather see Marcus Hunt as your first reserve and start Danico Autry and Tyquan Lewis together at defensive tackle. Might be a little small, might be a, not enough beef in the middle, but I think you throw those guys into the mix. I think those are your two best defensive tackles, but I'm not sure if the Colts are there yet. I think they might want to split a little bit of Autry and Lewis, but now that Lewis is fully healthy... I think give him some serious run. Matt Knox wants to know, what receiver fits the Colts' mold best? Marquise Brown, A.J. Brown, Nikhil Harry, Debo Samuel, or Delvin Harmon? I feel like they can go defense at 26 and wide receiver at 34. I would probably go with Harry or um, Brown, maybe Harmon. I I want a little bigger, thicker body. Um, A.J. Brown? A.J. Brown, yeah. Marquise is definitely the probably the most explosive wideout in this draft class. Um, His nickname's Hollywood, though, I and mean, kind of want to probably back away from anybody. Yeah, Hollywood. Um, I feel like he's related to somebody, too. Are you being sarcastic? Or no. Antonio uh, yeah, Brown. No. Is he? No, literally, yeah. Yeah, I, he's I, Antonio I Brown's say, cousin. Okay, yeah. I, I thought I you like, were. <laughs> no, I and I thought you were like, well, no, duh. The Browns are related to a lot of people. Like, the Brown is a very popular, <laughs> popular last name. Right, no, no, no. Um, and he has that Liz Frank injury as well mm-hmm. that I think some people are maybe a little bit worried about. But at this point, I'm just I'm kind of all for a third and six. Let me 
get it to a guy that's going to win press coverage, man coverage. Mm-hmm. You know, I, that's kind of where I'm at right now with the compliment. And I feel like Harry, and I know Brown, A.J. Brown, the Mississippi wideout, a little bit smaller, but I think he plays a little thicker than that. He's bigger than Marquise, but he's definitely smaller than, you know, Harry. Or yes, definitely. I mean, 6'1", like 205, yeah. something like that. Um, so that's kind of where I, I would look at as the ideal body compliment. Um, but having said that, the Colts, again, they like their their measurements. Um, they certainly like size as a measurement, but I think they like the explosive ability. So I wouldn't rule out, you know, a Marquise Brown or even if you get into the third round or late second and Terry McLaurin's still on the board and he doesn't fit that, you know, that exact frame that I'm talking about right now. I still think the Colts could be intrigued. 